I know it's been a while, ladies and gentlemen, but there's a shit ton to get through tonight. We've got a smorgasbord of things that have happened over the festive season and it doesn't seem to be letting up. So I feel it apt not to wait for the new year to stream. So allow this to be a sort of twilight to this year, but ultimately a Godwinson Live news alert on several things. Christmas has been and gone. We're just coming up to the new year. But I feel it pertinent now to turn and reflect on what we've all received this year. Many of us have received great presents, PS5s, Teslas, mead from Brian. Some of us have had a very shit Christmas, what can I say? Some of us have had to make do with a set of Donkey Kong bongos. A Playboy magazine with a tranny on it. Some happy hippo Kinder Bueno bars. Mountain Dew that's been wrapped. A single solitary cat. And uh, a rag on a stick. Literally a rag on a stick. Who could I be referring to, ladies and gentlemen? Who has had this tiny Tim level Christmas? It could only be the big dog himself. The fat lesbian himself, and we're going to get in to how he's being haunted by Jim Sterling's ghost, just like Scrooge was haunted by Jacob Marley's. Because this chain he's woven in life will also be with him when he's walking around in purgatory. You better believe it. Well, I mean, look at this, by the way. Just look at this. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. It's turned out to be a very Merry Christmas for PPP. Um, he got some bongos for a GameCube game. These are, these are gifts from, I believe, his family and friends. He got um, some Tahitian treat fruit punch. He got a Playboy magazine, a souvenir edition, because this person's dead now died of an overdose. He got some happy hippo bars because he's a fat fuck. And already they're open. Couldn't contain himself before he took the picture. So already they're open. He, literally a Mountain Dew. Some pea soup for when he's shivering in the cabin. But luckily they put a ribbon on it. Some pea soup. And uh, a, a lolly with a Spongebob on it. A Spongebob lolly and a rag on a stick because he's 500 pounds now. A, a rag on a fucking stick, folks. Merry Christmas. It's going real well, isn't it? <laughs> the grift's going real well, isn't it? Let's talk about something I wanted to talk about. And I really should do this every year. But for some reason, it just passes me by. But the one staple of Christmas, certainly in my household, is wondering what Jim Sterling's going to upload over Christmas, naming his shittiest games and his games of the year. Right? Um, now, every year he manages to do some bizarre mental gymnastics where he makes it seem as though he's above the common favourite picks of game of the year. And he often puts a really beloved game in the shittiest games of the year. He hasn't really done that this year. Mental, I know. But uh, I wanted to show you just first of all his Game of the Year awards. And those that he chose to be Game of the Year. And then we'll get into the shittiest ones. And I also want you to make the comparison. Christmas Carol-esque. Jim Sterling... It's PPP's Jacob Marley, and you'll see why. He's forging a chain, is old PPP. <laughs> and you better believe he's fucking visited by three ghosts, or else it's all over. He's going to end up like Jim Sterling. So... <clears throat> okay. We've jumped in a slightly too early on Jim Sterling because I did need to show you this to make the comparison apt. 
their last show, their last Kino Casino show before the Christmas break was uh, eight hours on Ralph. And I just want to show you current year PPP. Fully demonstrate why he needs a rag on a stick to wash himself. So just, just witness PPP. Now, the guy, at this point in time, has massive milkers. And his Christmas jumper highlights that fact. Over the 5 hours, 34 minutes, 2 seconds of this stream, you see all of the jiggle physics in as much motion as you possibly can imagine. Over Christmas... Instead of promising or delivering on the promise where he was going to lose the weight, guys. Remember that one? We're on the sixth weight loss challenge of this year. He was going to lose the weight. He's actually gained more weight than I could conceivably think. 500 pushing 600 pounds now. With big milkers to justify it. Bitch tits to justify it. Rag on a stick. Happy hippo. Spongebob lolly, Mountain Dew with a ribbon on it. It's tough. It's tough, bros. But uh, you might be thinking, okay, okay. An awards, Yatta. I'm Jay. Current year Jim Sterling. Current day Jim Sterling. Stephanie Sterling, we have a cavalcade of video games for... He forged this chain in life. Except Jim Sterling, look at him, in all his glory. Ain't as fat as PPP. Video you might be thinking, Video just slap a wig on him? How just slap a wig on current year PPP? Slap a wig on current year PPP? You've got Jim Sterling. Except PPP's got a bigger pair. It's also a bit fucking bizarre that instead of wearing a normal Santa hat, like little retard Andy is here, his head's so big he has to wear a fucking socking. That's fucked. That's fucked, bros. But it's the <clears throat> game of the year with Jim Sterling. Highlight of the Christmas season. Uh, yeah, he's wearing a dog collar. He's got a sparkly tiara on. Uh, a pokeball. Some tattoo. And uh, it's, it's just a symbol. An icon of degeneracy. But we're here this year with some sincere, genuine, bona fide, honest to God... Jimquisition Awards. It's now, <clears throat> does anyone want to take a peek, a little dip into the future to see what he chose? There are two insane picks in here that are purely in it to justify Jim Sterling's existence. But he chose some uh, uh, other picks that I don't necessarily think. Like, he chose Elden Ring. That's pretty based. I got the platinum Elden Ring, you know. That was a shock to see Jim Sterling choose Elden Ring as a game of the year. Usually he chooses something like, uh, like Pokemon Legends Arceus. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Repetitive, it's just swift and satisfying enough to not matter. While the varied Pokedex challenges associated with collecting and cataloging multiple creatures of the same species gives you plenty of incentive. Oh. I mean, you could say that about any Pokemon game, can't you? Um, but <clears throat> then you've got... You've got this pick, Game of the Year, by the way. Observe. A game that might not be on many lists. Ga this is Game of the Year. For Jim Sterling. It's called Franken, and it's shit. Due to making only a light splash compared to so many other 2022 releases, 
Franken is a teeny little game available on itch that I almost forgot myself. I mean, I really forgot it. I was racking my brains with only... He's even bastardising the Blake 7 theme tune with this one. Pretty much the last minute. Shame on me. For Franken is... From what I understand, it's like an Undertale clone. Made with the same detachment and... Gay as that game uh, was made with. But, I mean, this is shit, isn't it? You know, you've got a hint mouse. The hint mouse. You've got some slime here doing nothing. Bloody lovely, really. It takes only an hour to beat. An yeah, hour to beat? It, it takes only an hour to beat. It's a game of the year. The of turn-based role-playing games with a dorky sense of humour. Its story starts silly and only gets less sensible from there. With an ending that's just... You whimpering Weakleton. You've not got a chance in heaven or hell of thwarting me. Just let that one sit with you here. It's just... Yeah. It's hard not to compare Franken's meme-friendly gags and genre-based pastiche to Undertale. Meme-friendly gags? Is... <clears throat> I mean, as a JRPG fan in the current year, it's tough. It's real fucking tough. Not only do you have classic, um, what would you call it? Anachronistic fucking turn-based combat being reimagined by meme hipsters like Toby Fox in the garb of Undertale and this abomination called Franken. But everything else is like, PPP-sized titties, anime women, dragons who can talk, and little creatures who are all over various illicit porn sites. It's tough. It's tough. The only one I can really say that, hadn't di that didn't do that was the Yakuza 7 game, Like a Dragon, that took the old-style turn-based system. It's even a homage to Dragon Quest. But this ain't, this ain't like a dragon. This is Jim Sterling's one-hour game that he's calling Game of the Year. And you're going to see why he's nominated it for Game of the Year in just a second. Uh, let me just... I mean, this is garbage, isn't it? I could have drawn this drunk without any hands. In fact, many might confuse it for a forgery. But despite the inescapable association, it nonetheless stands as a worthy game for fans of nonsense. Although Franken's humour is very upfront and delightfully absurd, the more subtle goofs are the best, such as the quasi-scorpion character model that's been recoloured and used to represent anything even vaguely bug-related. Just neat, light-hearted jabs at RPG tropes without a drop of malice, clearly coming from a place of love. The music is shamelessly cribbed from other media and employed to perfect comic effect. I pretty much love... The music is stolen from other media. This, this is, in Jim Sterling's parlance, an asset flip. That he's only included in the game of the year, purely out of spite. lost my shit when I heard the Blake 7 theme blaring out at me. No game capable of ambushing me with Blake 7 could... And there you go. Not only does this video game... Not only, <laughs> not only is it stealing the Blake 7 theme tune, not only is it pandering to people like Jim Sterling, it's also got tranny bosses. It's the real reason why it's the game of the year for Jim Sterling. He can envision himself as this tranny bomb and go for broke. Heavens above. Anything other than worthy of at least a golf clap, but Franken goes further than that. With its brief runtime and gameplay so guided it's practically scripted, Franken is just as much exhibition piece as game. An extended joke that just so happens to be filled with smaller punchlines. It works, however, because it doesn't outstay its welcome. Is it's an hour long. It's an hour long. Any video game that's an hour long ain't gonna be outstaying its welcome. I'm afraid. Um, but you might be thinking, okay, so he nominated Elden Ring, he nominated Evil West, which I've not played, but looks to be a pretty good game. Uh, but he also nominated this one, and this actually won his Game of the Year. And I'm just going to let this play in full, 
purely because it's so shameless. I wrote for Vampire Survivors. I wrote a lot for Vampire Survivors, crafting its entire base game best year as well. So he wrote this game and I may well not that he's giving Game of the Year to. Called Vampire Survivors. This is the this is the game. Sure. How could it not? It literally is a mobile game that you that that doesn't require any skill to play. He's literally just moving around the analog stick and it's doing it all for him. I'm just let, just observe this. Game of the year, folks. Does it make my inclusion of it on my yearly awards show suspicious? I don't know. It's the biggest indie game of the year with an unprecedented level of positive Steam reviews near universal critical acclaim and is already featured on dozens of year-end honours across the entire scope of games media. If I'm biased, if my award is suspect, it sure as shit ain't gonna take away from the fact that Vampire Survivors is overwhelmingly beloved and will, for many people, be their easy game of the year pick. Long before I was... So that, that's the game of the year. A game that Jim Sterling wrote. And because he had involvement in the creative process, all quality control goes out of the window. All critical faculties go out of the window. Okay? So obviously he gets that out first. And you're thinking, well, what's, what's going to be his shittiest game of the year then? If, if that's the standard, Franken and Vampire Survivors, what's, what's it being measured against? So, here he is in a basement. In a dark basement. And he looks like a distorted version of uh, Eartha Kitt's Catwoman. Surprise! Okay, okay. So, <clears throat> his picks for shittiest game of the year weren't like... I mean, I'd have nominated probably Saints Row. Um, the, the, the new Gotham Knights game, whatever the fuck that is. Um, the new Pokemon. I mean, that was objectively quite a shit game, wasn't it? Uh, instead, he nominates... Okay, he nominates this. I think it's Dying Light. How did Dying Light 2 seek to improve on the formula with this anticipated sequel? I didn't play Dying Light. I have to be honest, I didn't play Dying Light. But from what I can see in this review, it doesn't look like a bad game. It certainly looks like an it improvement on Franken and Vampire Survivors. Climbing. In a parkour game full of climbing. Dying Light 2 makes the list this year for that one soul factor love. It's the same mundane game as last time, with one of the most baffling player downgrades I've ever seen. Like, who on fucking earth thought making the protagonist objectively shitter at the one gimmick the series has going for it was a good idea? What clown-brained bullshit! I understand. It's not as good as the first one. But when it's measured next to Franken and Vampire Survivors... You know, and the metric that he used to put them as Game of the Year is that A, they lasted an hour long, and B, he wrote one of them. Had he have had any hand in the creative process of Dying Light 2, and had Dying Light 2 been an hour long, it would have won Game of the Year, trust me. He also nominated like uh, this, which, which probably is the, game, the worst game, game of the year, years. Chocobo Racing. Shady and corrupt as the very worst offenders in mainstream gaming. It's also proven something else. That live services really are built on trust that has been squandered time and time again to the point where you absolutely should never believe that games touting long-term support will actually be supported. Take Chocobo no, not that, Not that anyone who's a grown man played fucking Chocobo Racing, but it really got Jim Sterling's back up. Then he got a spike pick in there. So there's a there's a guy that he's feuding with, just like Digital Homicide back in the day, called Gilson, that he just randomly puts the game in. Gilson-like, 
a game in which you run across a barren map for ages until you find an enemy who kills you in one hit. <laughs> so this is his Spite Vendetta pick. It looks to be like a rip-off of Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I imagine it's quite poor, but it's purely here because he has he's feuding with this Gilson character. The general gist of the genre named after a person so inept, so fucking awful at his job, that not only does he fail to improve with each yearly release, he actually gets worse. Ashikaru the Last Shogun is the true fucking pit. A game that doesn't even have any real defensive options in a world that's more threadbare than ever. It's practically designed to indulge the core gameplay loop of the Gilson like to the point where I'm... I, I don't know. I don't know. It certainly looks better than Franken and Vampire Survivors to me. Um, then you've got, quite rightly, the Diablo mobile game he nominated for Worst Game of the Year. We've got... This, which looks to be like a Dark Souls clone that I've not played. It gives you an idea of this entire game's mutant philosophy. In order to use magic, you have to equip spell slots in the offhand where you equip shields. There are two offhand slots. You yeah, take. it's a game that no one played and, and no one will play. Some literal shovelware that he's got off the fucking Steam store. Um, he quite rightly nominated this. Which was garbage. What handful of repeated objectives exist are basically all the same thing. Go to place, beat up baddies, that's it. It plays like the Arkham games, but significantly worse. This was that garbage. A complete waste of money for anyone who purchased it full price. Considering the game's auto-targeting is unreliable and that complete shit. Will jump from enemy um, to enemy at and then he also nominated this. And I realised they seem to sincerely like Sonic. this game in between sending me harassing Sonic Frontiers. With worse expletives and hate speech than they accuse me of publishing, but god damn. The old standards are so fucking low. If you think Sonic Frontiers is barren maps and pathetically pointless busy work counts as a serious high point. Like seriously, you deserve better than this. Even when half of you act There we go. There we go. So uh they're the worst games of the year for Jim Sterling. I played Sonic Frontiers. It was bizarre. It's basically Sonic and Breath of the Wild in the Death Stranding universe. I don't know what to make of it. Um, but I can't say I've played many Sonic games. But there we go. The Christmas staple of the Jim Sterling scheduling. We get the shittiest game of the year and we get the uh, game of the year being a pick that he's heavily involved in that's purely there to spite others. And his worst games of the year being feud picks and uh, some nonsense that no one would have played anyway, like Chocobo Racing. But it's the chain that he's forged, isn't it? When you have... A lesson to be learned, PPP. Well, it's interesting because we go after people too as well. It'll be Jim Sterling that visits PPP first on Christmas Eve, before the succession of three ghosts from past, present, and future, to tell him to change the error of his, mend his ways, show him the error of his ways, and address the future. They're being led astray, and they're ruining their fucking lives. My particular issue with it was they were pushing in cell I like you want to be an incel and dating women is gay and you know women are awful and women are the devil and all this fucking bullshit i don't think it's a positive message for it's you. not a positive message is it ppp especially when you're turning into a woman yourself i mean holy shit bro you got big i mean what is that double g's double x's i don't think there's a size that truly goes up to what he's at now uh, but the weight loss arc is coming, folks. Now, it wasn't just Jim Sterling and PPP that made Christmas this year. No, we had uh, <laughs> another uh, Christmas staple, which is the JF cooking stream. Now, I had approached Kraut, and we were going to do the show together, but Kraut is occupied, Kraut is busy, and Kraut is... I just want to jump in on this. So Kraut is... <clears throat> Kraut posts now. On Twitter, YouTube, every social media network. But he's posting on this thing called Mastodon, right? And this is the only way we can we can contact Kraut. And it's more obscure than sending a smoke signal up and hoping he sees it. Mastodon, right? Um, I don't know what this is. I've got no idea what this is. But it's... I think it's BreadTube's Twitter. I'm tempted to make a block list of all culture warriors. 
I wish I was still a student right now. How to achieve fascism? My family understands me. I'm never disappointed with what they give me for Christmas. What a contrast, eh? You get about $200 worth of books. Stuff you won't even fucking read. Compared to some bongo drums and a rag on a stick. A literal rag on a stick because you're too fat to wash yourself these days. But that's a pretty homely Christmas gift. And I imagine he's going to turn all of these into videos with meme balls on it. Um, but yeah, yeah, little tangent on Kraut. So uh, we were going to do this show with Kraut, the Christmas dinner stream, as we do every year. But Kraut's stuck on Mastodon now in the Phantom Zone. and We can't get through to him. So JF and his potato every year, they always prepare Christmas dinner. Sit on the show if you'd like, like like you've been doing in the last few years. Okay. But you'll need a chair. Okay. So this is what he replaced Andy Worski with, and it was actually an increase in IQ with the co-host. Full on. Let's bring in the appetizer. It's like replacing Worski it was like literally replacing a potato with Einstein, with Mama okay. JF. Um, I will send right away the video. So. <clears throat> Obviously, there's a, there's a smorgasbord of courses. He does one course, which is an aim at Jordan Peterson. And it's where he, uh, he spends $200 on a piece of ribeye steak. And he stuffs a lobster into it, two lobsters into it. I'm going to see if I can find the, the actual picture of it. it. We're running through Odyssey, so it's it's hard to find things on Odyssey. But here he is. Here's the potato preparing the fucking steak. That's a pretty pricey lump of whatever it is. I don't know what this is. I think he imagines that's going to cook in the pan. And because he's French and will eat it raw anyway, it doesn't matter how much heat it receives. So there's quite a lot of meat there. You know, he spent quite a lot on that meat. And this is how he's cooking it. Um, there's lobsters involved in this one. Oh, fuck. So uh, people were saying, oh, maybe he was just doing it in the pan just momentarily. No, no, he cooked the whole thing in the pan. Um, which is pretty fucked. And then, <laughs> um, and then he gets some lobsters. Oh, fuck. Right. This, this part's called cooking and stuffing the lobster. So they're alive. She just dumps them in. Now we're going to cook and stuff the lobster in our roll. Boil the lobster. We're doing a special scissor-based surgery. Now this lobster is overdone. This is going to be rubbery as fuck when it's eaten. I mean, look at the colour of it. That's fucked. But again, what's a lobster? About 50 bucks a piece, if not more. It only removes the carcass on the ventral side, keeping the outside appearance of the lobster on the dorsal side. Oh, fuck. This allows accessing the meat easily while not having to crack the lobster, and also allows penetration of the meat taste. Our ribeye roll is cooked. Oh. Now, this, this ribeye roll, by the way, I, <clears throat> I just want to illustrate how much money this course cost. I reckoned it to be, because he, he said the, the ribeye itself was 200 the pork belly he wrapped it in was like 100 These, what is it, lobsters, 50 bucks a piece if he, if he really scrimped it. So we're talking a good sum of money just on this one course. I'm just going to show you what it turns out to be. But before we do that, there's a... 
chopping board of cancer here that he's going to serve with it. And there she is chopping the onions. This is how it turns out, right? So he stuffs, or she stuffs the lobster into the roll of... I mean, this is a $500 course. This was his Christmas dinner. Hot sauce. With hot sauce. <laughs> you know, some people are having a real tough Christmas out there. They've got to make do with canned soup, canned pea soup. And JF, he's just eaten like a debauched king. Flavor. Well with the lobster color. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. This isn't even the worst of what he ate over Christmas, by the way. There's more. And there we go. Uh, lobster laced belly wrapped ribeye. Now, JF is obviously very fucked on wine. He was drinking before the stream started as well. And I think at this point in time, he's just realised what, what's happened, what he's let Mama JF do to Christmas dinner, uh, and how much money he's spent on this endeavour. <laughs> you better believe that it's all raw as well below this. The lobster's really overdone. Um, I wouldn't, I, for real, I wouldn't touch a, a single morsel of this. But they're French, so... <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Mama JF, what a spectacular... Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Truffle. truffle. That's a $500 course, at least. <laughs> Flavored lobster lace, belly wrapped ribeye. I'm happy. Uh, it looks better than I thought it would, actually. Yeah, it looks Imagine your expectations being that low, living with Mama Jeff, where she's making you dinner every day, that you look at this and go, this is better than I thought it was going to look like. People are saying it looks Lovecraftian. Yeah. It looks like a Dark Souls boss. It's a painting. It looks like a painting. A painting. That's basically what was my dream, and it's just as good as in the dream. And on top of it... But when you have a lobster like this, it's super hard to crack the lobster. And we would have gotten all dirty, which is unviable in the streaming industry. So, this lobster is actually super easy to eat. Below the lobster, it's all flesh. I don't know if we can see it, but look at the forceps. It's all eaten. What a poor little dude. <laughs> poor little lobster bros. So only the, the dorsal part of the of the lobster, only the dorsal part has kept the carcass. It's actually immediately accessible. So I just wanted to show you how much he chews this lobster. Because it's it's so overdone, it's like rubber. Of the lobster. Now Mama Jeff, I still have a rotationary issue here. So I was wondering, are you able to give us some portions? Maybe with this knife. Oh, fuck. Know. Now, would you hand Mama JF a knife? I mean, we all know it's... She knows it's a bad idea. We know it's a bad idea. JF is so blind drunk, he's just going with it. This this really is... <laughs> is that a dagger I see before me? Oh, fuck. Or, or do you want me to do it? You want me to do it? All right. She knew it was well, a bad idea. Uh, guys, I'll be back. Now, this is a spectacle in itself. Oh. Oh. He's just snapped off its claw. My phone is telling me I've got 10%. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to...
put this on and get the charger. This video is not sponsored by XP Pen. Every Christmas I have done this little thing on this YouTube channel where I buy a video game, do a raffle in the Discord server and gift the video game to a random subscriber through my Discord. I'm not going to do that this year. This Christmas I wanted to give away something that I believe is much better. A drawing tablet by XP Pen. I have worked with XP Pen drawing tablets for pretty much the last four years of this channel's existence. I started out with an Artist 12, which is probably the best one for beginners, and over the time I upgraded from an Artist 12 to an Artist 22, which is now my main workhorse on this channel. And I also own a really nice Artist Pro 16 that I use with a laptop to work while I'm on the road or out of town or in my bed, but I unfortunately recently broke my laptop so I can't use it at the time as much as I would like to. XP Pen drawing tablets have become an essential part of my YouTube channel, not just in drawing pollen balls. It is incredibly useful to have a tablet with which you can draw minute little details and then edit them into a video. Owning a tablet also just leads to you just... Okay. That, that, there goes that interlude. So fuck you, Raffle Bros. You ain't winning the game this year on the Discord. So let's get back to Jeff carving his monstrosity. He's really struggling with this. Christmas dinner. It doesn't help that he's fucking two sheets to the wind. So here he is going to clean his hands with toilet paper. Going to clean his hands with some toilet paper. Like an animal. You go ahead and you continue the service. Uh... <laughs> oh my god, it was hard to cut, but I got some good pieces because I wanted to... I wanted to taste it close to the lobster. The question is... Is the lobster taste penetrating? <laughs> I'm actually short of breath. <laughs> Just coming through. I wanted to determine if the lobster taste makes it through the ribeye. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, we don't need much more meat, Mama JF. I mean, it says you wish, but... I'm going to eat a single bite of it. It's very good to have this beautiful pork belly part, definitely. And perhaps some leeks, green bean and sauce is what would be left. He shit it. Oh. <laughs> Every new addition to the plate makes it look worse. And are you about to drop us some sauce from the pot? Yeah. Sats. Uh, I mean, it's a beautiful place. Now look, Neats, some of you might not have had a great Christmas, but you've sure had a better Christmas than this. I'm sure that was whatever was on your plate is a lot more <laughs> sumptuous than this shit. Right in the end, for something that we just did last... I mean, that's raw. The pork is yeah. raw. Ribeye, it's... Not as rare as you would want it to be, but... <laughs> oh. As rare as we could make She's just playing with the lobster. Place. And I don't know, Mama Jeff, if you want to dirty your end, but can you pull out the lobster She's going to eat its head. <sighs> the whole lobster tail, holy shit. It's coming out. But look at how rubbery it is. That is fascinating. I absolutely want to taste this. Look at this. Yum yum. Tail. 
They ate the parrot last Christmas. It's not a thing. You think? No, it's. I thought about this for about a week. Really? Yeah. My God, it's not a thing. It's it's the first time in the history of. You can tell in this this relationship dynamic that JF really scares Mama JF. It almost terrifies her. Jeff is just blind drunk half the time, thinking up these extravagant courses that they can waste the super chat money on. This is ever done. Really? What happened? Now, what about this lobster tail? Presumably, so look at her chewing this lobster. You shouldn't chew it for as long as she's chewing it, it, if it's cooked properly. A little bit of sauce on the lobster tail. Totally different. This doesn't taste. I think she just said like it tastes like a bird. It has this burnt aspect to it. It has this burnt aspect yeah, to it. The pork belly has truly penetrated the lobster tail. <laughs> the leeks flavor of it. The sauce is different. All right. Uh, this wasn't the worst of what 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 he ate over Christmas. Now, Mama Jeff got him a surprise. I'm going to try and find the timestamp. So, Mama JF got him a surprise. Do you know where I bought this? Can I see? She went to Walmart and bought him a surprise. Well, you bought this at some Asian shop. No, at Walmart. At Walmart. Yeah. She got this from Walmart. Keep this in mind. Okay. They sell it on Walmart. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can say Walmart. It's an egg that hasn't been cracked and yet. No. So, this is a rotten duck egg that Mama JF has got from Walmart and is going to serve up as a surprise course. So there's still the shell. How did they penetrate through it? I, I don't know. So you have fermented an egg in its own shell. Yeah, how did what, it go? What have you done, Chinese people? How did they do that? How did they do that? So how do we crack this? Mama Jeff is knocking it on the table. <laughs> Can you show us on the camera what does it look like when you crack it? So at the moment, this looks like just an egg. But when, when it's cracked and peeled open the shell, you'll see the true abomination of what's this egg. What, what this is entails and... What the f I mean, this... You'd think that... A lobster-laced pork belly ribeye, whatever the fuck that was they just ate, was the height, the apex of all this. But it's not. Unfortunately, Jeff's Christmas and his currently delights only plumbed a new depth. Because I, I mean, this is something where even he throws up. So are you going to just remove the shells? Yes. <laughs> Rodina Sun says it's boiled in soy sauce. And you think? He it's seems to be a Chinese person. It's not fermented? Just drinking oh, red... Oh. The blackness of it. It's like we've opened the door to a black hole. Holy shit, this is glossy black. Glossy black. I mean, he's excited to eat it. Only the French, ladies and gentlemen. Just drink more of that red wine out of a jug. What a surprise, Mama Jeff. Uh, Micronova says, don't eat it. No! <laughs> you better believe they're going to eat it. Black egg. It has become black on the inside. Oh, look, there's just a thing. It's transparent, there's black. Little, little chick in it. There's a little chick in it. Yeah, I inside. see the inner structure. The inner structure. You can see inside. It's like transparent black. And when you look close, you see filaments of the yellow part. It's like a, a snowflake. It's like, it's a, like a snowflake. <laughs> it's like it's like a snowflake. Oh, a snowflake! It has crystallized like a snowflake. Now, at what point do you put that down, throw it into the bin, and end the stream? At what point do you go? Actually, I'm going to eat this. It's a rotten egg. I 
don't know how we get the best camera view on this, but... A rotten duck egg she got from Walmart. It's a black egg. The Chinese appear to be eating those things. Oh. There it is, the snowflake. The snowflake. The snowflake structure. Snowflakes are... The world. snowflake is actually the mangled chick inside. Universe, not just a thing of the winter. They happen inside the eggs too. Confirmed by Mama JF's research. So, uh, you've bought a bowl of what here? This is, I, because I have a Chinese uh, and they say, okay. Not a word of this, by the way. I've watched this many times. There's no translation. Available, I'm afraid. I have been with an Asian girlfriend, and that's exactly what they do. <laughs> okay, you ready? You taste first. I taste This first. is like a Bush Tucker trial. Can't we clean this? I mean, it looks like there's a... Uh... I mean, <clears throat> just before we get into this, there's not much that JF won't yeah. eat. Whether it's because he's French or what, but he's he, he he will eat things that anyone else would draw a line at. Ugh. Ugh. Now look at that. That's the inside of it. It's green. There he is. He instantly regrets the decision, and she's excited to go for the full bite. He starts throwing up. Merry Christmas. It's like a pudding. Oh my she keeps squeezing it. What? No. <laughs> I need to wash my teeth. That is disgusting. She's going for it though. Absolutely horrible. Uh, oh. I'm a very open man. Oh. Mm. Mm. Is it's alright. Is that right? No. It's okay. It tastes like liquid death. It tastes like... Well, it is liquid death, JF. There's a chicken there. It's turned to soup. Oh. oh my God, this was Christmas dinner, by the way. This is so weird. You eat this and you're like, no problem? It tastes normal. It tastes normal. Oh, no. It's just a snowflake. Why is it black? Because it has spent too much time out of the fridge. Oh my god, it's so weird. <laughs> it's fine. Imagine the fucking smell, oh, by the way. She keeps squeezing this rotten egg. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> don't eat this. What happened? I would really like to know what happened there. Well, it, it, I don't oh, know. Oh, she's eating more of it. This in your mouth and chew it. He's just lost for oh words. God, it looks like jello. Now we... So there we go. Um, that's another Christmas staple delivered to us. Not only did we have Jim Sterling's Games of the Year, we also had JF's Cooking Stream, where he serves up Christmas dinner. And this one, by the way, I encourage you to watch the full one. It's like a two-hour long stream. Watch it all. It's insane. They talk about uh, the structures of proteins. Mama JF is actually, bizarrely, a very learned woman. I don't know what's going on there. Either she's leveled up, evolved or something, but she's actually talking in a way about the structure of proteins that is bang on the money. And it's fucked. It's like she became a scientist or something. Um, but she's still Mama JF, so it's all delivered with a retardation that is quite humorous, but also quite scary at the same time. Now, that wasn't all of it. Uh, what did I want to do here? Okay. We're going to play this before we move on to the next segment. Because you may have thought it was all over. There wasn't going to be a Christmas miracle this year. We'd gone. We'd flown the coop. And we'd stopped delivering the Kino Dogmo 2007. Well, let me promise you something here, folks. One which we will deliver on. 2023 is going to be a real, real wild ride. It's already shaping up to 
be fucking insane. And we're only in the last week of the year. So much shit's happening. I don't necessarily know if we'll all make it to 2023. Will our heads just explode? Will the Millennium Bug finally kick in? It's gonna be a, an action-packed one. Each month has something going on. WrestleMania, ralph mania We've got some trials. We've got Baked Alaska going to jail. We've got a few things, really, in the pipeline. For Christmas as well, not only did we receive medals from Squire, a bottle of mead from Brian, Ralph Mania tickets. We also got every single DM, every single one that PPP sent to person, every single one. It's all just sitting there, folks. Gonna wheel them out on special occasions. Some of them are insane, by the way. Some of them are truly crazy. True gay lover shit. Okay, so on this next segment, we're going to talk about risotto and what's been going on there because he did a stream right on locals that he didn't think anyone would watch but i was watching and uh i've got a selection of clips here that i just want to play uh did they actually cry for a refund i don't know so here he is dressed sure like he belongs in a in a in a gay bar this is a lawyer a family man um now the context of this stream is him and his wife went to like a gay bar on the weekend and uh, did MDMA together. And now he's on a come down doing this stream where he rages at people, calling him out on his degeneracy. This is a lawyer, by the way. All right, we've got a few of these clips to get through. Notifications or whatever. I got a, I got a couple of them, uh, you know, a month ago. It's like, all right. So that clip, the context of that was he's responding to someone saying that um, <clears throat> basically people have been charging back his super chats. People are saying, no, we've had enough. We're charging back on the super chats. Oh, the Ricade dating channel. Okay. The, the reason why we're showing you this is because there's just full mask off. The, there's no hiding the degeneracy now. It's just full on. Oh, the Ricade dating channel would be pretty fucking hysterical. I have long been wanting to do, like, uh, that type of show, just, like, on Locals, as pre-recorded videos. He wants to do a dating show on Locals. What about the internet law, buddy? What about those people that are waiting on the electric chair for you to write their appeals, huh? But also, I have some, I have some streams planned that involve that, because I think they'll be funny. Wildly different than whatever whatever anybody else is doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be real wildly different. Um, when you're internet lawyer, you're based Christian man. Well, people don't understand because they're like, oh, the locals is just as toxic as the Discord. No, 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 no. No. So he streams on this. Locals is basically a Patreon that he uses, and this is where this stream was coming from. And he's got a real axe to grind with his Discord. It's the drama. Discord, because Discord is full of pussies and bitches, just absolute chumps who cannot, they can't take a joke, they're super edgy, they're super fucking cool, awesome, like, internet old fags who will say, nigger kite faggots all day, like, the, oh yeah, I'm so cool, and then someone changes their name by two letters, you would think they're about to shoot up a fucking mall. He's, he's very angry at, at his interactions with Discord. Now, this is his own Discord, by the way. And um, <clears throat> you may remember 
that Josh did a stream reacting to Rakata's cuckoldry about a month or so ago, where he made an allusion to the fact that if it did come out that there was um, some underage person in his Discord and there was some illicit things going on there, Josh would be very shocked and horrified. And people at the time wondered, what the fuck does Josh know? That came out of a bit of left field. Well, it's all confirmed on this one. You know, whole oh, shit. The full mask off with Risotto here. Um, but before we get into that... But you know what's, what's interesting to me right now, and I will always talk about what is interesting to me. Sargon new coach new Josh new. I've had more and more people online, a lot of men, by the way, Drex specifically, um, Bronca, others we'll get to, who started talking about the dynamics between men and women. And I was told over and over and over, mindset, yes. I've, I've been told by all these people that I don't get it. Like, I, look, you've been married too long. You're not in the market. You don't understand or whatever. And, and I was like, okay, well, I, I actually find this really fucking interesting. I find this interplay between men and women to be very weird, uh, like weird and, and real. And These are the words of a cuckold, Unash unabashedly. It's like, okay, th this is actually important to a lot of the ball doll. Because everybody's looking for some form of companionship. So I start talking about it more. And that's when women started showing up more. And so that, that has actually been an interesting topic for me. And that's kind of, that's what I'm focused on right now. So He's focused on his cuckoldry and telling everyone about it. Not the internet law, not the values that he promoted. He's actually focused on shit like this. It's like, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. So I want to have monogamous sexual intercourse with my uh, wife of 18 years whenever I get the opportunity. Whenever um, she allows you to. If that makes me a sex pervert, fucking call me that all day. I don't like... Look at the cook goblin. That's, that's what I want to do. Look at that. Come on, take and, a sip, uh, buddy. There's this weird fucking thing on the internet where if you mention that, somehow amongst like this uh, weird neoconservative thing, that, that that's like somehow a problem. It's not having sex with your wife. It's all the weird public shit. I feel like you become an exhibitionist. Okay, but if I have become an exhibitionist, so what? So what? Take a sip. <laughs> like, honestly, so what? Well, he's not just drunk, guys. <laughs> he's coming down from an MDMA I fucking bitch. I don't understand. Like, we'll get into that in a moment. So, so what? He's an exhibitionist now, and him and his wife are just uh, exploiting their cuckoldry, right? Um... God. It is what it is. Again, uh, here's the thing. Uh, Lady Lady Raggets took me to the uh, karaoke bar and then the underwear bar for my birthday. The underwear we, bar? We had, a, we had a fun time. Um, two, uh, two lesbians tried to pick us up and two, two gay men tried to have sex with me. I, I, like, I don't know. We had a... None of them succeeded. It was a good fucking time. It was a good time. Have, have fun in your fucking life. How is the sex, Nick? If I'm, am I still sore? Bitch, I already told you I was on MDMA. The sex was fucking fantastic. Cock goblet. There we go. Take your sip, buddy. This is a lawyer. People look to him for legal advice. My goal, pretty much every day, 
is to uh, try and have sex with my sex wife. With my wife. <laughs> Does it happen every day? No. Did you hear that? His goal almost every day is to try and have sex with his wife. Does it happen almost every day? No. Because he's a cuck. It's tough. Of course not. But it happens enough. Once a year. And uh, I, I don't know what else like I want to do. Like what? How about the law? What How about representing your clients, Ricator? Is there for me to, like, do and achieve in life? I don't know. I don't really fucking care. Was he ever really a lawyer? Was it all just a big scam? Is this how Lionel Hutz was spending his free time? You know, you going to gay bars on MDMA? Good. Good. If my kids see, if my kids learn that I enjoy having sex with their mom... And that uh, they should do a bunch of fun shit with their spouses. Fucking good. Like, Jesus Christ. Do you know how long it took me? My parents never talked about sex. Never. Until I was like 39 did they mention it ever. And only like very nervously. Jesus Christ. Like, I, I don't know what their sex life is like. No, should you? I'm, I'm kind of fine with, I guess, just because I found my own way. But it kind of would have been nice to know that, like, if your parents are into each other or not. Like, it it kind of would have been nice be, like, to kind know. Of nice to like, if your dad just came up to you and said, I've just given your mom the best ride of her life. Like, you don't want to know this shit. Uh, here is words. No, a little bit like, oh, yeah. You, they don't have to go into deal. Oh yeah, we we still like each other. We still do this shit. Oh okay, cool. Got, I don't I don't know. I don't know what you do. You shouldn't know what they do. Even like each other. Now I do. Like now I do. And it wasn't. It wasn't that weird finding out. But again, if if my he, he wants his mom like to give him the blowjob update they, on the weekly. What the fuck? Um. They said I've been in a bad fucking mood all day. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because I had a really good weekend. I had a really, really fun weekend. It's fantastic. But MDMA has a cool down period, okay? <laughs> and the cool down period means you feel like shit. So he's on his calm down, basically, after this weekend going to a gay bar on MDMA with his wife. Critical says, I don't think you were like this before. No, I wasn't. I didn't do MDMA until I was 40. Now I've done it twice, and I've enjoyed it both fucking times. And the first time, I didn't have a, I didn't have a come down from it. I, did I didn't. It was great. Uh, this time I did. But I know, you know that's a risk. That's your lawyer. That's your lawyer, bro. You better hope you don't get a fucking speeding ticket and go to him. You'll end up in the electric chair. You better fucking believe it. Um, what about this one? And again, I'm pro-porn. I'm a fan of gore. We used to do Discord live chats where we would watch uh, Reddit's Make My Coffin, watch people die. What? Or whatever. What? I love all that shit. <coughs> the degeneracy in this Discord. All you have to do... All you have to do is post it just in the right channel. The ones that are marked 18 plus. It's really fucking easy. It's all you have to do. And people still won't. It's... It's... it's it's just post it on the right channel. It doesn't matter what's in the Discord, as long as it's categorized in the right in the right way. How baffling. So this whole week, by the way, this whole week there's not gonna be daytime streams. It's Christmas time, and if you have kids, you know. If you have kids, you know. When Christmas time comes around, any activities that involve kids, all the Fucking losers who run them. They all just like, oh, you have mandatory stuff. You got concerts, you got mandatory meetings, you got whatever. 
kids have to be there. They have to do this thing. It's like, fuck off. It's Christmas. Why would you do this? They all do it. It's, it's so fucking lame. Talking about his kids, by the way, and his kids enjoying Christmas. All I want to do, all I want to do, Chad, I want to either go to Cancun or California for New Year's, and I don't... So, fuck your kids. You know, no, no Chris, Christmas is cancelled. Your dad's going to Cancun to take MDMA, dress like this, and watch his wife get plowed. I think I can do either. That's what I want to do. Based family man. That's it. The Christian lawyer. Um... Once someone decides something about you internally, nothing you can say, absolutely nothing you can say will ever change their opinion. It is impossible. So you, you can't fight it. So someone says, oh, uh, you're out fucking a bunch of people who aren't your wife. I, I mean, I guess I hope they're hot. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember... My dick going in anybody else, but maybe there's some days I don't remember. I don't know. What? What the fuck? Uh, uh, <sighs> you become a degenerate drug addict sex pervert. Oh, no. <laughs> Homie, I've always been a sex pervert. Literally forever. Mask off. What are you talking about? Mask off. One of Nick's bulls says, I hear you go, enjoy it as much as I do. Yes, there's the pictures of me and Lady Rackets naked on a uh, on a cement bench there. Dear Lord. We had a really good time. And then there's, yes, the pictures Lady Rackets posted in chat. And um, Dear I'm me. 100% fine with her posting those. Now, you might have noticed he's wearing, like, the flag of Jamaica or some shit. Esoterically within his tank top. Um, we've got something lined up for that one. You can't make this up, you know. And This is just the tip of the iceberg of what's been going on this festive season. As we're all aware, there's been some watermarked screenshots that's gay as fuck. Imagine watermarking screenshots and expecting anyone to cover it. I'm not here to make you an e-celeb, no-name account that doesn't even make content. Get in front of a webcam, present them yourself. Take away your fucking watermarked nonsense. Oh, no. It's hard to you. So here you go. This is the ball, though. And this number, this is directly this is from you. But this number, you gotta do is shove your balls in there. Baldo, I'm calling you out. I am one of the biggest advocates for your product. I am here, this show, sponsoring you. Your Baldo could be on Ricade Along. Easy lover, her legs are famous in Jamaica. Below and above her. She's an easy lover. 
She'll spot the phone book in Jamaica. Soon you'll discover there's not an N word that hasn't taken her. She's an easy lover. She'll take your money but not your semen. Under, Under the covers, covers. it's a sea of multicolored cream. You're the one that makes the fat stacks. You don't even get to touch rack. Better get tested. Her Chinese infested. For she'll go and do a brother. Then she'll do another. Better forget it. Oh, you'll regret it. <laughs> At other guys, she's winking, you're drinking and drinking. Better smell tests, cause sniffing is believing. It's the only way. You never know. <laughs> I think a lot of times as moms, we feel a lot like uh, my uh, tomato plant here. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, give to me more. Uh, uh, Peter, this is uh, uh, okay. Goldbinson and Asa will return in the sequel to this follow-up, um, <clears throat> to this number one Christmas album, uh, number one hit song, Easy Lover, will return in a rendition of Gay Bar, an ode to Nick Ricator and his midlife crisis. Watch the skies. And uh, <clears throat> I think that's all we have for this one. A little roundup of events, just to tap off the year, because I don't think anyone's really covered what we've just covered. Um... Truly outstanding. I don't know where we're going to end up, even by the end of this week, let alone coming into the new, new year. Uh, now, the last time we saw each other, we got flagged down by PPP for doing a great song to St. Elmo's Fire. Um, I'm going to play this in full, and if they want to strike me down, they can. They absolutely can. But I'm back. And I can come back at any point in time, PPP. You ain't gonna stop the fire. You're in trouble now, boy. <laughs> Here's a song from all your old friends. Just for you, buddy. You earned it. Here it goes. Oh, this fuck. You don't see the writing on the wall. We're picking up where we left off, folks. But maybe sometime, if you feel the pain, you'll find you're all alone. I'm gonna be ready in a second. Then there's Uncle Norman, he's fed. See the now. Your catfish is called Snacks, and she's a dude. You know that in some ways you're much worse than me. You're just a grifting will. And your name's PPP. Ashton display his anus. Spread his cheeks and show his hole. You can be eliminated and look like a fat guy. Gonna be a blob in motion. All he needs is a pair of heels. Throwing back to the frozen cabin.
We're back. We were going to have Ralph sing this part, and he was willing, but uh, the timing's in the line. A man has his time, and my time is now. I'm coming to life. Can't face the music, baby. My toast is getting high. Feel like a turd again. I wish I could die. Gonna be a blood in motion. All he needs is a pair of heels. Going back to the frozen cabin, fat caterpillar. I shouldn't display his anus. Spread his cheeks and show his own. You got laminated and look like a fat dye. Gonna be a blob in motion. All he needs is a pair of heels. Going back to the frozen cabin. You know what? It was a challenge to fucking write the lyrics to St. Elmo's Fire as an ode to your best friend online. But there we go. We always deliver. Um, that's all we've got for this one. Uh, I can do a quick Q&A to round it out, but uh, that's all we have. That's it. Until the next one. Uh, shall we see what we're saying? Okay. Got it. Candles. Any Vauchmus? Well, actually, Vauchmus is going to be... Uh, <clears throat> New Vouch Day, and then we're going to push it back to Vauchentine's Day. We might even do... <laughs> Happy Vouchster. Maybe we'll do that one. Daimo and Shaggy got swatted. I don't know anything about this. They got swatted over Christmas? That's fucked. When's Uncle Norm? Well, the plan with Uncle Norm is to do a stream on Gator, where we present Gator as Uncle Norm. And we go through all of the archive of Gator content we've got. All of the clips and every post he's ever made online when he wasn't the Gator and shit like that. And we're going to present that as Uncle Norm. St. Vaustrix Day. Someone saying it was Axel who swatted them. Well, I'm not seeing any comments in the uh, in the live chat. Is PPP on HRT? Why is he looking like a woman? Um, whatever he's on, you know, Jim Sterling is envious because Ashton's managed to make himself look even more feminine than Jim Sterling, who's actually on the hard stuff. Thoughts on Ralph versus Mr. Morris? Um, it's entertaining. It feels like a repeat. Feels like a, a rerun. Uh, we'll see where it ends up. I think they're all going to Ralph Mania, aren't they? So that's going to be interesting, getting some live coverage from that one. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, the Twitter is... What is the Twitter? What is my Twitter? I don't know. I've got a Twitter. It's linked to this channel. OBS will only be used on very special occasions, as per the rules of the Kino Dog Bay 2007. Thoughts on Metica handing up his hat indefinitely? Has he died? Has he died? If Jim's dead, I mean, uh, rest in peace, I suppose. Bro. He said the cancer got worse. Oh dear. Oh dear. New Year's will be his last stream. Oh, well, there we go. He ain't reaching uh, 2023 with the rest of us. What can we say? What can you say? Old men get old and die.
thoughts on what will actually happen at Ralph Mania? Um, I imagine it'll be like the ending of The Wild Bunch, if you've seen that film, by Sam Peckinpah. It'll be exactly like that. Slow motion, blood splatter, lots of people dead. It is what it is. All right. <clears throat> we got 30 seconds left. Stream with Coach. Well, we were trying to get that one together, but Coach wants to talk about Ukraine. And I could give two shits about Ukraine. We want a call-in show. Um, I don't know how I can get that set up, but if you want to call in, by all means, try. Any more news on Top Cat? I think Top Cat's still after the rabbit bitch, isn't he? What a fate. What a grim fate. Still sniffing around after that one. The wind in the willows. Ratty and mold. Give me a break. I mean, I, 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 how do I do call-ins? The phone is here. Um, if you can find a way of calling in, by all means. At the end of the day, would you agree that it is what it is? It is what it is. It is what it is. It is. It is what it is. Wash myself with a rag on stick. That's fucking tough.